Welcome to this special edition of Interesting Times Podcast. We have breaking news coming out from the Middle East and what appears to be one of the most slickest attacks ever on another nation. Almost 3,000 people were hurt um, in Lebanon today. We had a massive, massive, from what I can only guess, Mossad operation that injured 3,000 people in Lebanon and targeted suspected Hezbollah members. Detonations across Lebanon reported as Shia militia says two of its fighters and a 10-year-old girl were killed. Almost 3,000 people have been wounded and at least eight killed after pagers used by Hezbollah exploded across Lebanon simultaneously, according to the country's health minister. The um, explosions were across the country and uh, we even have some early footage of this, which I'd like to show you real quick. Here's kind of what the scenes look like. Um, these electronic devices just exploded on the members. The hospitals are full in Lebanon. Um, it just makes you wonder. It makes you ask a lot of questions. Um, first of all, it shows you the reach and the capability of either the Mossad or the CIA, or the collaboration of both, because they basically work together. Um, but their reach, um, it can get you anywhere, anytime, any place. Um, besides the obvious that I said in October last year that this war would expand well beyond the borders of Gaza, Palestine, and Israel, that many countries would be pulled into this. And I have to believe after an event like this, Lebanon will retaliate. You have Yemen in the south. You have uh, a cross-border raid that happened a couple weeks ago with someone from Jordan doing a suicide bombing. This war is just starting, and I have the fear that it will pull all of us in there. What I'd like to point out to you all is, you know, leaving this whole thing aside... And, you know, I'd love to see what these devices were. First of all, they definitely had someone on the inside that was aiding um, whoever, you know, facilitated this attack. It means they definitely had people that were turned or betrayed the people that were being targeted. There's no way you get this many devices to people. It's either that or B, all these devices have that capability. I mean, what if that's really the reality? What if all electronic devices actually have this ability? We've seen what can happen with these batteries. I mean, what if the devices we're holding could just explode on us because somebody wants them to? I mean, we don't know the technology. Did it have to be created that way and then planted? Or was it just capable of doing this? That's a question that everyone should be asking themselves. That's number one. Number two, this is another reason why you should never want to have any type of technology implanted into your body because if certain people get control of it or hack it or want to do some serious damage to you, this is a friendly reminder of why you should never get anything implanted into you, a chip, any type of technology, because anything that's connected to the matrix has the ability to cause you harm from your privacy to your identity to your intimacy to from what i can tell now the tech has gotten to that point where it even could cause you bodily harm period this story of what happened in lebanon is not just about that and that that war will expand it should make you think is this tech safe could someone push a button and take me out or explode in my uh, uh, pocket and create seriously bodily harm or did an explosive have to be planted into it i would really like to know and i hope that the lebanese government releases whatever they find of what these devices were so that people around the world can know whether or not they want to carry these devices on them um, but this is something you need to think about my friends and family so um Crazy, crazy time. In any event, Sean Diddy Combs. I said, where is he last week? Well, he was in New York City, and he was arrested after a federal indictment. 
The hip-hop mogul who has faced a stream of allegations by women accusing him of assault, physical abuse, was arrested late Monday in New York after he was indicted by a federal grand jury. The indictment was sealed and details of the charges weren't immediately announced by prosecutors, but the U.S. Attorney in Manhattan, Damian Williams, confirmed in a statement that federal agents had Combs in custody. We expect to move to unseal the indictment in the morning, and we'll have more to say at that time. From what I understand, um, there's a lot more to that actually coming out right now. Let's pull it up real quick. But Puffy's Diddy, done. He's done. Some other articles here that have been released is that he was indeed hit with sex trafficking, racketeering. Um, so Sean Diddy Combs has been indicted on sex trafficking and racketeering charges. Presi uh, Sean Diddy Combs presided over a sordid empire of sexual crimes, coercing and abusing women for years, threatening them to keep them in line, and enlisting a cast of AIDS to cover it up. According to an indictment on Sealed Tuesday, the music mogul engaged in a persistent and pervasive pattern of abuse towards women and other individuals, including physical violence in order to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. It describes him inducing female victims and male sex workers into drugged up, sometimes days-long sexual performances dubbed freak-offs. It also refers obliquely to an attack on his former girlfriend, the R&B singer Cassie, that was captured on video. Combs was arrested late Monday in Manhattan, roughly six months after federal authorities conducting a sex trafficking investigation raided his luxury homes in Los Angeles and Miami. He was due in court Tuesday afternoon, and his three sons arrived at the courthouse Tuesday morning to observe. His spirits are good. His, he's confident, said the attorney who said Combs came to New York voluntarily to engage the court system and start the case. The indictment describes Combs, a 54-year-old founder of Bad Boy Records, as the head of a criminal enterprise that engaged or attempted to engage in sex trafficking, forced labor, interstate transportation for purposes of prostitution, drug offenses, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. He's accused of striking, punching, and dragging women, throwing objects and kicking them, and getting his personal assistance, securing household staff to help him hide it all. The evidence in this case is incredibly powerful, prosecutors said in a document seeking Combs' detention. They said they had interviewed over 50 victims and witnesses and expect the number to grow. Let me tell you something. With the exception of Murder, Inc., the rap group record label, Irv Gotti and his brother, getting off of a federal charges that were, you know, held against them, the feds ain't coming unless they got you. Let, let's, let's be real. Diddy can say goodbye, man, in my opinion. He's finished. What do you think? Florida sheriff releases mugshot and perp walk video of 11-year-old charge with making school shooting threat. Every time we make an arrest, your kid's photo is going to be put out there. If I can do it, I'm going to perp walk your kid. So this a happened. A stock pile of weapons was found in a Port Orange student's room. So an 11-year-old, what they did is he was threatening to shoot up his school. So they went and arrested him in school. They found a cache of weapons. They walked him out like a criminal, which they rightly should have done. And now they should interrogate the parents and find out what happened. Since parents, you don't want to raise your kids, I'm going to start raising them. Volsa County Sheriff Mike Chitwood said at a news conference Friday, every time we make an arrest, your kid's photo is going to be put up out there, and if I can do it, I'm going to perp walk your kids so that everybody can see what your kid's up to. On Monday, the sheriff's office announced the arrest of the 11-year-old Creekside Middle School student who allegedly threatened to commit a school shooting and had a written list of people he claimed he would kill. Police say they recovered airsoft rifles, pistols, and fake ammunition, along with knives, swords, and other weapons from a middle school student who threatened to commit a school shooting. The child is handcuffed, being walked to jails. You know, this is crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. We have lost our way, man. I am telling you, the future is not bright in our country and around the world. We've lost morality. Everything is backwards, man. We deserve it, though, because we think we're smarter than God. Meta's banning Russian state media for foreign interference. This is reported by Reuters. Facebook owner Meta said on Monday it was banning RT, Rosia, Sengdoya, and other Russian state media networks from its platforms, claiming the outlets had used deceptive tactics to carry out covert influence operations online. You mean like the kind that Meta carried out when they were told discreetly by the government to suppress anything questioning what happened during 2019 and 2020 and 2021 you mean like that type of interference meta 
I find it very funny, man. It's like the kettle calling it black or whatever the hell that expression is. Speaking of Russia, submarines and naval ships across into buffer zone off Alaska, U.S. Coast Guard says. This is reported by CBS News. The U.S. Coast Guard said Monday that it tracked a group of Russian naval vessels, including two submarines, as they crossed into U.S. waters off Alaska in an apparent effort to avoid sea ice, a move that is permitted under international rules and customs. The Russian vessels consisted of two submarines, a frigate, and a tugboat. We are actively patrolling our maritime border in the Bering Sea, Bering Strait, and Chukchi Sea. With our largest and most capable cutters and aircraft to protect U.S. sovereign interests, U.S. fish stocks, and to promote international maritime norms. There have been several similar encounters in recent months. Last month, a U.S. Coast Guard cutter on routine patrol around Alaska's Aleutian Islands came across a Russian ship in international waters, but within the U.S. exclusive economic zone. Elon Musk got into a lot of hot water yesterday. He had to delete a post on X about Biden and Harris assassination threats after backlash. Elon Musk wrote and then deleted a post on X that appeared to question why there weren't more assassination threats made against President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. And I did see the post. Listen, I think the guy was just asking a simple question. Isn't it funny that only Trump is having attempts on his life? I don't think he was making the post to incite people to try to take out the Democratic candidate. But unfortunately, we live in a world where you know, how your things are perceived, even if it's not what you meant, you can be held accountable for. After, his hour, the, after Hours after the initial post was deleted, Musk penned two other ex-posts in which he claimed the original one was an ill-received joke. Well, one lesson I learned is that just because I say something to a group, they laugh doesn't mean it's going to be all that hilarious as a post on X. <clears throat> so, from my understanding, the Secret Service also reached out to him, so... Not such a funny joke for him, I guess. RFK Jr. confirms he is under investigation over whale specimen collection. Former pre uh, independent presidential candidate RFK Jr. confirmed over the weekend that he's under investigation for collecting a whale specimen 20 years ago. This is all about the weaponization of our government against political opponents of the party in power, Kennedy laid, added later. Kennedy seemed to be referring to the National Marine Fishery Service, a part of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration that is responsible for marine fisheries. It is longstanding NOAA practice to not comment on open investigations. In 2012, Kennedy's daughter, Kick, told Town and Country Magazine that her father cut the head off a whale that had washed up on the shore in Hyannisport, Massachusetts when she was a child. The interview gained traction again uh, recently during RFK's uh, junior ending his campaign. What does this have to do with anything? No, it's targeting. And the whale was already dead. Mayor Eric Adams, I think his career is dead. Mayor Eric Adams faces growing calls to resign amid f uh, federal probes. The mayor has to resign, City Councilwoman Tiffany Caban said. Councilwoman Caban is now the first council member to call Adams to resign, following the numerous federal investigations swirling around Adams and his team. The mayor has not been charged in connection with any of these federal inquiries, but Caban says that there are patterns to what she called his mismanagement of the city government. It's not just that more than 15 of his associates are being investigated, Caban said. It's also a culmination of his other failures of leadership. Eric Adams is failing at his job. I agree. He's a fucking joke, and he needs to resign. Someone that I probably think wishes they resigned was a mayor, mayoral candidate in Sao Paulo, Brazil, who got hit by a chair by his opponent. Here's some footage of that if you're watching this episode of Interesting Times Podcast. Send my no, Bye. No. And there goes the chair. That's one way to get rid of your opponents. Chaos broke out on the stage in Sao Paulo, Brazil, after a mayoral candidate, Jose Luis Detenta, hit his opponent, Pablo Machal, over the mention of a 2019 sexual harassment allegation that was withdrawn. So that's what happened there. Just a quick little episode for you guys. It's been a crazy day around the world. Think about what I mentioned earlier on this episode. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Check out all my content. Follow on X and Twitter at BEKLoverNYC. That's New York City. B-E-K, B-E-K lover, N-Y-C. This is your boy, Beck Lover, and you're watching the Interesting Times Podcast. Beck Lover. Beck Lover.